I'm going to talk today a little bit about salt guns. There's a lot of them out there yet. There's thousands of them still floating around out there. We've talked about this before. Uh, the Browning Company uh, got a lot of it. Uh, Weatherby got some. The Fajan and Bishop Gunstock Companies, they ended up with some. Uh, uh, Winchester. I, I had a Winchester Model 21 in the other day that had salt wood. I'd never heard such a thing, but I talked to some custom gun stock makers and they say that's pretty common. I'd never seen it myself. I've seen plenty of Brownings, but that stuff's out there floating around. They bought that wood from uh, uh, a company in California and another one over in western Missouri. And uh, it was just a faster method of uh, curing wood that they devised back in the uh, mid-60s. And uh, they were, Browning Company and other companies were selling a lot of guns and they needed wood and they needed it fast and kiln drying just was too slow. So they had a, this new system they came up and basically it was a matter of just stacking blanks of wood uh, on, in piles with layers of salt between them. And they, uh, the salt pulls the moisture out of the wood and I guess it didn't click with people that uh, um, you know, it's going to embed in the wood, and it certainly did. And so, it can be in different degrees. You can have a real hot one, or you can have one that's a pretty mild case. But they're all bad, and there's still a lot of them out there. And you got to really know what you're looking for when you're out there buying these these particular guns. And anytime you see one that's got rust where wood meets metal, I'd say you probably got a salt gun on your hands. Um, we're going to start off today talking about some superposed. Uh, here's a Diana superposed a uh, little 410 gun pretty little gun uh, um, customer sent it in want me to salt test it for him I've already done it um, I'm just going to talk about this a little bit I've got some others that do have some salt content we'll get those out and kind of go through them but I've gone through this one and I've pulled the wood off and I've done a salt test with silver nitrate I sell this stuff by the bottle and one bottle will do 100 guns um, like 24 bucks or so a bottle, but it's money well spent. This is another bottle I've got here. I kind of like this because this one's kind of got an applicator in it uh, where you can kind of really drip it on it, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. So anyway, this uh, Diana came in and had a beautiful little gun, a 410. It's field choked and boy, it's got all the good stuff going for it. Too bad somebody cut it and put a pad on it. That's, that's going to kill the value, something awful. So They've done it, but anyway, I tested this gun. The customer suspected it was a salt gun because it was made according to the serial number J6 in 66, and that was the year they started with the salt wood. Went up through the 70s. Well, I say 70s, about 1970. So, customer suspected this might be a salt gun because it's a short tang gun, new style gun. And uh, when I picked it up to check it, uh, you know, there again, it could be salt, you know, I, I really don't, you don't know till you pull the wood off. Uh, because it can be just a mild case with a little rust on the inside receiver. This one was fine, it's not salt wood. There again, it's too bad they cut, put a pad on it, that ruined it. But um, another thing you look for on salt guns, uh, where they rust up first is around this escutcheon in the uh, form. That's the first place you look. So, you can kind of do a visual inspection, you can... Take the gun and get it in your hands and look at it, and you can generally spot them if they're salt, unless they're just a mild case. But this gun, I, I've uh, I pulled it off and I did a chemical test on it. And it's just fine. It's uh, it has no salt in it. Now I'm going to jump over here a little bit and I'm going to grab another one that does have some salt issues, and uh, we're going to talk about it. So let me put this one up. And we have here a beautiful little Diana two barrel set. Uh, it has 410 barrels and has a 20 gauge barrel. Beautiful little gun. Now, as we talked about, the first place on these forms that you're going to see a salt problem is around that escutcheon. See all that rust? That's a sign of salt right there. Uh, that's the first place they go. And, uh, Here's, here's a good one, and I've uh, previously checked these guns, pulled them off before I made the video to kind of look at them, but this gun, as you see, no rust here, you know, most likely it's not salt. Now, 
uh, the only real, as we talked about, the only the only real way to test them is uh, to uh, pull it off and, and uh, do a visual inspection on it and do a chemical test. Now, there again, to take the forms off of these uh, Dianas, uh, you need a very fine slotted screwdriver so you don't burn the screw up. We have to make them. That's about the only way you can get a screw that uh, screwdriver that uh, works right. And uh, we're going to pull the uh, screw out. We're going to take the forearm off, and we're going to look. Now, this is kind of a mild case. It's not too bad. Uh, there's a little rust up around the front here on the bracket. Um, I don't see much along the barrels, but there again, salt content can be all the way through the forearm or it can be just in spots. This one just has a, an issue with a, a salt up in this area right through here. Doesn't seem to be, you know, any salt damage anywhere else, but it's still salty. Now, I don't really probably need to do an inspection on this with chemical. I can tell you it's salt, but when you, when you check them for salt, get in the inlet and get your little chisel and you got to get through all this finish down here and all and kind of chisel out a little bare spot and uh, then drop a drop of silver nitrate on it. Uh, and then when you do that it'll turn white. And if it stays clear or maybe turns black it's okay. This one's turning white. It's not turning real white real fast because it's it's kind of a light content of salt but it is turning white so this gun has a salt form on the 410 barrels now the only fix of course is to replace it that's that's the only way you uh, repair salt you know I've heard all this stuff about sealing and this and that and you kind of can do that uh, sealing with them we just use true oil you can dob it in there real thick and let it dry and hit it again the next day and get a couple coats in there and um, it will uh, um, it'll seal them up if it's a mild salt case and uh, buy you a little time it's not a fix when I went to work at Browning in 1971 I was working on a lot of salt guns and at the time they didn't have wood to replace it with it was salt free so we were sealing, um, the, we would uh, repair the metal and then we'd paint this sealer into the uh, inletting of the wood. It was called permethane. That was some kind of a brand name. I don't know what it was. And we'd paint that sealer in and put the salt wood back on after we blew it. Well, that's a disaster looking for a place to happen. It's going to be back eventually. But anyway, this gun, as I pull the forearm off, I don't see any sign of rust anywhere. And you know, and there again, it's clean around the escutcheon. Uh, I, I will later on pull it off and, and chisel out some little uh, bare spots and I will uh, check it for salt. So, um, uh, just to be sure, but I don't see any sign of it. The, the, it's going to be hard to see down in there, but it's staying clear. Uh, which tells me that it's not, it's, it's salt free. Which you can just kind of tell by looking. So let's put this back on. I'll put these forms back on later. I'm gonna write a nice letter up to the owner of this, the, these guns and tell him what we found. Now, here's the stock. Now, I really don't need to pull it off to tell you it's salty. Um, it's not a bad one, but it is salt. It's got a little rust around here where wood meets metal and uh, salt damages and and, and uh, erodes the wood away and it's kind of turning black and you can kind of see the woods kind of crumbling and, and just the wood just disintegrates from that salt content now we're going to pull this off anyway and look at it and uh, then we'll we'll do a, an inspection on it and we'll talk about it but um, the first thing, you, the first hint that it's going to be salty is uh, when you try to remove these butt plate screws. That's, that's where it'll tell you. Now, see if they come out. I can't get that top one out. It's probably locked in from salt. Let's try the lower one. The lower one's coming out. 
There again, salt is just in spots, and apparently there's a spot of salt up around the top screw there. And we're going to take the lower one out. And this one's got a little rust on it. Uh, sometimes they come out really rusty. So this, this is a classic salt gun. We're just, we're just going to swivel this butt plate up out of the way. Get it out of the way here best we can. And uh, pull this stock off. And uh, look at the... Um, Look at the receiver. Now, did you notice my screwdriver that I used on this stock? I'll show it to you. You know what? You got to be careful taking stocks off of guns uh, these, that have the draw bolts. I have this guard on this screwdriver, so I can't get. The, if you didn't have this guard on there, the flat part of the screwdriver can get down next to the stock bolt screw. And when you twist it, and if you're not on the screw, it'll pop a side of your stock out. That's a classic. Now. So we pull the wood off this gun. Now, here's the salt damage from, uh, you know, there again, it's just, it's just kind of in this, uh, this uh, left side of the receiver. Now, as I turn it over here, look over here, I don't see any damage at all. So what we have is just a, a salt, a spot of salt on the left side of the receiver. Now, we'll do a salt test on it just for the heck of it, chemical test. Uh, just to kind of show you what it looks like. There again, you got to take a chisel in the inlet and kind of get a little bare spot uh, where you can get the uh, silver nitrate on it. And I'm putting it on just this side here because I know this is the salty side. Now, it's turning kind of milky. It's turning white and uh, salt, which we knew it was. Really didn't need to do a chemical test on it. I've got another superpose here I'll show you in a minute that, uh, believe me, you won't need to do a chemical test on it either. You can see it's salt from about 50 yards away. So, that's that Diana. So what the customer has here, he's got a Diana, two barrel set, beautiful little gun, 20 gauge, 410 barrels. He's got one clean forearm on the whole set. The other forearm salty and the stock salty. To replace that, oh, uh, about two thousand five hundred dollars to replace that wood on that gun. Now, another <coughs> other guns that uh, are out there that have salt wood are the uh, safaris. The old safaris made around sixty seven, eight, and nine. This one was made in nineteen seventy. It says L seventy on the serial number. So it's salt. That's a good, that's a good time for salt. That was the end of it, but. Uh, that, that's a good year for salt. So anyway, we got this medallion in. It's been refinished by someone, it's been re -blued. Uh It's got some issues. Now, the first place you look on these guns for salt, if you're at a gun show somewhere and somebody's got a safari laying on the table, this is a magnum that has the two reinforcement screws. Standard calibers just have the one larger screw in the front. But anyway, this is the first place they usually go. Uh, where you start to see the salt damages around these reinforcement screws. Now this one, just to look at it, doesn't really look bad. I don't see any sign of rust anywhere on the gun. Um, there again, when I'm buying a gun made in 1970 as a, a medallion, you know, that's a suspect to me. Now on this one, here's another giveaway. They'll rust around the swivels. But look at that front swivel. It looks pretty clean. But now here's the real giveaway. Here's the spot where they really rust. These have a lug in the front. Um, on the front barrel and they have a screw going up through it and around this this is scutcheon is where they really rust now when you see this gun you better beware because someone has taken that escutcheon out and they've kind of chiseled all around it and uh, that tells me it's probably because it was rusty and they wanted to get rid of that rust uh, around the uh, that uh, around that uh, screw so that's that tells me you know even though the rest of the gun looks pretty clean, that tells me it's probably a salt gun. These up around these these magnums around that uh, uh, around that little uh, discussion in the front, they really go bad there. That's that's one of the first places they go. And there again, excuse me, at the reinforcement screws. <coughs> now we'll go ahead and remove the stock on this one, just to look at it, and uh, so we can verify. That it's salt, you know, 
no one would have taken that escutcheon out for any other reason and the gun's been re-blued but so we really suspect this of being a salt gun now at a gun show or somewhere you know you don't have your chemical test with you and guys don't like you pulling their uh, uh, wood out This is, a, this is a different ball, it's a different animal here altogether. It's got a trigger shoe on it, which I didn't see, which I've got to take off before I can uh, do anything with the gun. I wonder what we're doing on this gun. Are we uh, gonna... Uh, we're gonna sell it. We're gonna sell it as it is. Yep. Well, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> Let's get that trigger shoe off of there. I better watch it though. It looks like they've done some funky things on that trigger. I'm gonna have to take that shoe off. Uh, well, in the meantime, though, I can look down there and I see rust on the back of this load. Uh, so I know this is a salt gun. Uh, I will, later on, after I get this stupid trigger shoe off, I'll, I'll do a chemical test on it. But it is, it's, it's a salt gun, apparently kind of a mild one with a bad spot up at the front. So watch out for these uh, safaris. There's lots of them out there. And there's a lot of them that have salt wood on them. So those are the, the areas that you watch for on, on the safaris. Now, another interesting thing, for some reason back in the 80s, Browning ended up with another batch of salt wood. I have seen salt wood on high grade 22 autos. It's usually on the high grades. I think it's always on the high grades. Uh, gotta watch those if you got a grade two or three gun that's you see at a show and, and it's got like funny looking, you know, if it just looks suspicious to you, it could be a salt gun. It's not likely to be, but there's a few out there, and I've seen it on some of those two millionth commemorative A5. I've seen salt wood on those. Uh, I've seen it on BT, uh, BT-99 or two. Uh, guns made back in the 80s. So where that wood came from, I don't know, but it's out there, and, uh, it's not a lot of it back in the 80s, but there was some, and it usually is on high-grade guns. So that's the thing to watch for on safaris. Now, we've got one here, an old Super Pose we picked up at a gun show. And uh, believe me, I really don't need to do a salt test on this gun to tell you it's salty. Have you ever seen one that bad? That thing is terrible. I think we paid a couple hundred bucks for it just to kind of salvage a few parts out of it. Uh, but I thought it'd be a good conversation piece. It's one of the hottest, saltiest guns I have ever seen. It's just loaded with it. It's just the barrels are, are, will be ruined. I haven't really pulled it off a look, but there's no need in really trying to do anything with this gun. This gun is toast. Now, the interesting thing is, there again, it's just the form. The salt, the stock appears to be okay. Stock doesn't really show any sign of salt. So salt can go either way. It can be... Both pieces, it can be one or the other. Now, on a, on a decent gun, you wouldn't go chiseling on the outside of the inletting. Believe me, we're not gonna hurt this one. I just wanna show you probably how fast this silver nitrate will turn white when it hits this, because this is a real hot gun. This thing is really loaded with salt. See how fast it's turning white? That tells you that's a heavy salt content. So. I didn't really need to do a salt test on this gun with my chemicals. I could have stood across from a football length and told you that is a salt gun. No question about it. But um, anyway, the, um, the, the chemical test is, is the best way on a gun that's suspicious to you, that you can't really see any sign of salt necessarily. Uh, it's always a good idea to do a, just scrape it out in the inletting and get your silver nitrate and, and uh, drop a drop of it on there and see what it does. It was safe.